Hey guys, it's Joe from PocketNow.com, and just recently Amazon released their Kindle app for Android, and just today, or yesterday by the time you're watching this, Barnes & Noble released their Nook Reader for Android. So we thought, what could we do to find out which one's best? Well, let's get the same book on both and see how they do. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone out to Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com respectively. I've set up accounts on both and I've purchased iRobot by Isaac Asimov. I thought it was fitting because, well, this is an Android and iRobot talks about robots. So, hey, not every ebook that you find is going to be available for Kindle or for Nook. So doing a one-to-one -one comparison was actually a little bit tricky for me to find a book that was on both of them. I'm sure there's an awful lot of overlap, but keep that in mind. You might have to have an account on both, which I'd really like it if there were a unified ebook reader that would read either Kindle or Nook books, but that's a uh, topic for another article. So let's jump right in. Since the Kindle app came out first, let's take a look at it. Now I am running Froyo on a Nexus 1, so you can see it launches pretty quickly. I added this just a little while ago, and you notice that automatically upon starting the app, right now I've got iRobot in there. I haven't opened it, I haven't done anything with it, but using WhisperSync, which is Amazon's automatic syncing protocol, it's automatically pushed that to my phone. So I've not seen how fast this stuff loads, so let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, right there, we're in the book. And it opened right to the introduction page. It skipped over the cover, the contents, the forward, right to the introduction. You can see here, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty quick. It's very, very readable. If I want to jump into anything, I can do that by using the go-to. I can set a bookmark, see how that's done. Just like that, and you can see I've got a little dog ear up here. Yeah see if I can zoom in a little bit there. I've got a little dog ear up in the corner to show me that this is uh, page marked. I, I don't really like that because dog earing your pages isn't the best practice for books. I'm a hardback fan myself uh, and I don't like it when people dog ear my pages. So I would like to have seen like a little bookmark um, icon or something to let me know hey here's here's where your your page is. But you know a dog ear works just fine. You can see when I scroll to the next page that dog ear stays on the page. Also, I can change my view options, change the background color to sepia, which is a little bit easier on the eyes, change it to white text on black, which is a lot better for battery life, and I can also adjust the brightness, if it'll let me slide this, so it won't let me slide, but it'll let me tap various positions, apparently. So I can change the brightness here, and that helps with battery life as well. So overall, not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and remove that bookmark. Scrolling between the pages is very quick, which I like in the Android version a lot more than the actual Kindle version. So it does its job, it does it pretty well. Not bad. Let's go back now, and you'll notice down here that it saved the furthest location. Kindle will synchronize your bookmarks and your books across many devices. So I could go to a Kindle if I actually had a Kindle device and be able to pick up right where I left off reading in my Android phone, which is really a cool feature. Um, the desktop version as well. So next, let's jump into Nook. Tap on Nook. Takes a little bit longer to load, or it, it looks that way. A little bit different user interface, and you'll notice right down here, iRobot is in my library, but it's not downloaded yet. So to do that, I actually have to tap download. And I'm over Wi-Fi here. Didn't take too long at all, as ebooks are generally relatively small. So we'll go ahead and open that now. I like the cover on this a lot better. The experience looks better. And if you notice down at the bottom here, we've got this little scroller to scroll you through the pages. So I think that's kind of a neat user interface element. It lets you jump through large sections of the book, kind of like rifling through the pages of a, uh, a paperback or a hardback book. But let's get to page turning. Now, you might not have seen that. Let me show you here a little bit slower. I can grab here and look at that. You see how I've got kind of a page? And I can flip it all around here. 
it really looks like I'm turning a page. And the same thing goes backwards. It looks really nice. It's very fluid. Turning the pages is just as fast here as it is, and I can go through really quick if I want to without much animation at all, but if I just kind of want to leisurely turn the pages, I can do that. I like that a lot more than I do on the Kindle app, and it really surprised me. Now you'll notice up here a little plus sign. You tap on that and it'll dog ear that. That I assume is their bookmark feature. So if we go to look at bookmarks, sure enough, bookmark page five, just by tapping on that. Again, I don't really like the dog ear uh, user interface, if you will. I'd much rather have a little bookmark coming over the top, but they both handle it the same way. That having been said, this book cost me a little bit more on Barnes & Noble than it did on, uh, on Amazon for Kindle. So I actually ended up buying the book twice. That to me is a problem. I bought the book, I should have the book. It just goes without saying. I would really like to see hardback books, especially hardback, come with a digital copy that you can just right there, you've got it, you can scan a barcode, um, you can type in a code at barnesandnoble.com and now you have access to the digital copy of the book in addition to the paperback. I don't know how they do the uh, page syncing hardback to uh, digital version, but that's uh, another technology altogether. Now, as I understand it, if I want to synchronize where I am here, I have to push either that sync button or that sync button. It doesn't look to me like it automatically syncs, though I could be wrong, um, which might be okay. You know, if you don't want to sync stuff up, you have control over your synchronizing, whereas on the Kindle app, it automatically syncs for you. There's something to be said for each method. Both apps, as you can see, have a relatively good uh, user interface. I happen to like the way the, the Nook lays out your library a little bit better than the way the Kindle app does. But both of them, if you go to shop for books, immediately kick you over to the website. So I, I don't necessarily like that. Uh, I'd like to have some kind of a store inside the app rather than having to go to a mobile version of the web. But you know, that's just me. Um, you know, if I wanted this, I could go ahead and tap to buy now. And as long as I have my credentials saved in the web browser, for in this case, Barnes & Noble, it'll automatically deduct that amount from my credit card and I'm good to go. But if I want to go back to here, I've already got that saved here. And the same thing goes with Kindle. I've got my credentials, my username and password saved in the app. It doesn't pass that over to the web browser and it shouldn't because they're separate apps. But it makes for kind of a disjointed user uh, user experience, and I don't really like that. However, if I'm going to be buying these books, I'd really like to buy them on my desktop computer on a really big version of the website, and then just have it automatically synchronized with my phone. And they both did that very well. So overall, the Amazon Kindle, I really like the Amazon Web Store a lot better than the Barnes & Noble Web Store. I'm there a lot more. Um, but the Kindle app isn't quite as good as the Nook app, in my opinion, and most of that comes from this page animation and the ability to just very quickly rifle through the pages using that scroller on the bottom. So, I want to know, what do you think? Which ebook reader do you like? Is it Nook, or is it Kindle, or is it another one? Go ahead and leave me comments down below this video. Uh, if you've got one that you really want us to review, let me know that too. If you've had a different experience with Nook or with uh, with Kindle, I want to know that as well. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like reading books on your phone, thumbs up as well. Of course, to stay up to date with everything having to do with smartphones and the mobile lifestyle, you'll want to subscribe to our YouTube channel and showing you the difference between the Nook and Kindle apps. For Android, I'm Joe for PocketNow.com.